think really it started very well. I mean, obviously I started on uh, Ben Nevis about four in the morning. And uh, I think prior to that though, the challenge had been actually just getting to the start line. I managed to actually sprain my ankle about a week before I was due to start when I was I was running on uh, on Helm Crag in Grasmere, and I'd been winding down. You know, I was fit. I was I was good to go. Obviously, lockdown pushed the start date further and further back, and it was trying to choose the right time. And I think if you wait for the perfect time, you'll never start. So I just had to set the date and go for it. But uh, obviously, you know, the ankle then pushed me back by another two weeks. So I had two weeks just to kind of sit in all these doubts and fears that you would get before a big race anyway um and I just had to go for it you know I was assured the ankle was okay um you know but until I started on Ben Nevis I had no idea what was going to happen but what I didn't know is actually from then onwards everything else would, would go and the ankle would become insignificant mm. and the first day went perfectly well um you know 50 miles to uh Tindrum with about 10,000 feet of ascent but the thing is obviously living in the lakes um, most of my running is on trail on fells and I hadn't done enough on tarmac so it was all fine until um, I hit the tarmac and then by the end of day two I felt like I'd been hit by a bus mm -hmm. and I was in a hotel in Glasgow saying to my friend Rich like how on earth am I going to run another you know, you know well I had 58 miles planned the next day and it feels impossible you know and I had uh, uh, tendonitis in my left foot that was raging the ankle had kind of started and then just gone uh, my knee started to go on day three and I remember reaching out to um, Dan Lawson who uh, he broke the record yeah, for yeah. Uh, John O'Groats to Land's End and, or Land's End to John O'Groats even and he actually ran through Kendall a few weeks earlier and this been a massive inspiration to me you know he was doing kind of 85 miles a day on average on tarmac and I remember kind of you know because again it was such a new thing for me I'd not really done ultra marathons not, not kind of multi-day ones um, I didn't have a clue really so I messaged Jan and he said you know day two is always the worst and it's strange but the body does somehow acclimatize mm, yeah. and it gets used to the pain and it just bears it um so day three you know the pains kind of went in my knees and that disappeared then day four it was um it was uh it was the uh tendons in my feet so I could literally maybe walk a mile and run a mile then walk a mile run a mile just because it kept it you know it was like being kind of whacked in the shins mm. um and I think then again, then again, the that day. I mean, it was very hot as I was coming out in, coming across you know, the border um, by Gretna Green, and uh, then it was yeah, the heat got me. I remember having a bit of kind of a bad wobble, and I got a bit panicky and spooked and feeling very faint. And, and I thought something, you know, you know, I thought something bad was happening. And I think in ultra running, it's very easy just to get something wrong, whether you're you know dehydrated or you kind of run out of fuel. Um, but that spooked me a bit. So I thought, okay, I'll just get over the border, then I'm in England, and then if I quit, at least I've done, I've got that far. But then I could see the fells and the lakes mm -hmm. glowing in the sun, you know, glowing in the sunset, and I thought, quitting's not going to be so easy. You know, crossing the border was a, an amazing feeling on day four. Um, but then on it just kind of got worse because the day the next day I had uh, Storm Francis came to join me yeah, in Carlisle. Yeah. So it was like wetter than an otter's pock, you, know, you, you, know, you, know, you know, it was just absolutely grim. And, um, and also, my ankles had swollen that much that I could not run more than 10 metres at a time. Mm -hmm. Every time I tried to jog, it was just, you know, my shins were on fire. It was like being whacked by a hammer. So I, I thought, okay, well, I'll keep moving forwards. You know, if I have to walk the entire thing now, then I will do. Um, so I'm, I only managed 30 miles that day. And, um, yeah, it was getting to the point of this is ridiculous. I need to stop. Um, got some new road shoes. Uh, I think it was Pete Bland in Kendall. Mum, my mum kind of had... I, you know, had kind of sensed that I was not in a good place and went to get some more shoes just because my feet were that swollen and I needed a bigger size. Um, I, I stopped early uh, near Keswick, got a sports massage that night, and actually that was when everything changed because he assured me that, um, you know, there was no reason to stop. They were swollen, as they would be after doing the sort of mileage, mm. um, but there, there was no that damage. Was normal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just needed to change, change a few things on the routine and... Um, and yeah, basically the next day I was running again. But then coming down the stairs in the hostel that morning, I managed to stumble a few steps and actually um, sprayed a perineal tendon. Mm. So I was running again, but I had this niggling pain all day uh, on Scarfall Pike. I came down Scarfall Pike um, and I, I felt good, but uh, you know, watching this ankle like a minefield, you know. And then it was raining, it was dark, I was behind schedule by a day. And I remember this lowest ebb, you know, I was on the edge of tears thinking it's all over. How on earth can I continue? Mm. Um, 
but then out of the darkness, one of the one of the uh, Mine of Mountains participants came out. You know, she'd been there with some uh, Kendall mint cake, waiting in there for me a few hours just to give me a cheer and some encouragement. And then later on in Skelworth Bridge, there was a couple who just emerged out of the darkness just to hand me some money for you know you know for, you know for, you know, and that just gave me the reason. Actually, this is why I'm doing this. Mm. You know, I have a choice to be out here, putting myself through this, getting soaked which I wouldn't expect anything less in the lakes. Um, but that friendly support w- was amazing, you know. And then obviously I contacted you, you know, that was day five. But then I then I, I was a bit desperate for more sports massages, mm. so I contacted yourself yeah. and you saved the day with uh, Vix Farrenden who came and met me in um, in the car park in Joey's Cafe in Kendall. <laughs> so I was having a massage with a pasty from Joey's and um, and again she told me that, okay, yeah, your feet are a bit a bit wrecked, but there's no reason not to carry on. So I was I was relieved, you know. I wasn't looking for a get out. I just wanted to be able to carry on. Yeah. Amazingly, the body is a pretty resilient thing. Um, so I carried on from there, and um, yeah, by that point, everything, something else, something else broke every single day. But I just knew knew it would disappear. Yeah. yeah. You just got to get to the next morning, and then everything changes. Yeah. Yeah. 